Hello again, beautiful calculus students. We are moving on from all the tests for convergence of series into a bit of a transition section where we're talking about polynomials that we saw earlier with our calculator exercise. And we're going to make these polynomials become infinite series. So this is a transition where we're going to talk about approximations of functions using polynomials. And in upcoming sections, we'll make these polynomials become infinite series. So we'll just jump right in with the definitions. Uh, recall that we had talked about these concepts before with our calculator exercise at the beginning of this chapter. So we are doing approximations, and our first approximation is called the Taylor polynomial. And the formula for that, I'm just going to give you the formula, and we'll talk about explanations later. The formula says the nth Taylor polynomial, right? So P sub n, that n means it's the nth Taylor polynomial, so it's the nth degree polynomial. So that is defined as the value of the function that you're approximating at some point C. We call C the center. So the Taylor polynomial is centered at some number C. So centered at C. That's a quote, not a parenthesis, centered at C. Okay, and so it's going to be the value of the function at some known value, some known point C, plus the derivative at the known point C times the difference between the point you want. All right, this is what we're trying to evaluate. We're trying to approximate at, approximate, boy, approximate at X, but we know everything about what's happening at C. Okay, so it's the value of the function at our known point plus the derivative at our known point times the difference between our known point and the point we want. Plus, right, we're going to keep doing this for n polynomial, n uh, derivatives, so plus the second derivative at our point C over 2 factorial times x minus c squared. And I'll put a plus dot 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 and plus, give myself some more room on this particular page, plus up to the nth polynomial. So how do I designate the nth derivative? So it's the nth, so do a parentheses f to the nth prime, evaluated at the known point c over n factorial times x minus c to the nth power. Okay, that may, may seem like a big mess, but there is quite a pattern to this thing, right? We're seeing the value at the known function, the first derivative times the difference between the, the, the point of interest and the known point, times the second derivative divided by 2 factorial, and that difference to the second power. So the the nth derivative, the nth factorial, the nth power, okay, so all those things coming together. That's the Taylor polynomial. The Taylor polynomial is centered at some number C. If that C happens to be zero, we get what's called the Maclaurin polynomial. So the Maclaurin polynomial is a Taylor polynomial in the special case that it is centered at zero. So I'm not sure how Maclaurin got his name on a, uh, a technique that is more specific than Taylor. I don't know who came first on this. I think a book will tell us. Okay, well, let's jump right in and do an example. So this is example three. It says find the nth Maclaurin polynomial for, well, one of my favorite functions, e to the x. Well, let's write out what we know about the Maclaurin polynomial. So again, Maclaurin polynomial at some point x. It's the value of the known function or the known value at zero, right? That's the Maclaurin, plus the derivative at zero times x. Well, x minus zero is just x, right? Plus the second derivative evaluated at zero over two factorial times x squared plus dot, 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 all the way out to the nth derivative evaluated at zero over n factorial times x to the nth. Okay, let's write out some of these terms. So our function, again, let me go back to black on this. Our function is e to the x, so f prime of x is e to the x. So this is getting pretty easy. The second derivative 
is e to the x. The third derivative is e to the x. Okay, this is great. Um, so this means evaluated at 0 is 1. The, second, the first derivative evaluated at 0 is 1. The second derivative evaluated at 0 is 1. The third derivative evaluated at 0 is 1. And we can keep going on this, right? Dot, dot, dot. We get the nth derivative at x for e to the x is still e to the x, which means conveniently that our nth derivative evaluated at 0 is 1. Okay, so this is a pretty simple uh, polynomial to put together. So the nth Maclaurin polynomial is 1 plus 1, oops, 1 plus 1 times x plus 1 over 2 factorial times x squared plus 1 over 3 factorial times x cubed plus dot 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 plus 1 over n factorial times x to the nth. Okay, what a beautifully simple expression that is. So we're doing an nth order approximation to e to the x, right? So the exponential function e to the x is approximately equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 6 plus dot 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 plus x to the n over n factorial. That is a beautifully elegant, simple expression. Okay, let's move on and do another example. Jumping ahead to example 6, this asks us, asks us to find the third Taylor polynomial for f of x equals sine x expanded about c equals pi over 6. So that means centered at pi over 6. Centered at pi over 6. Okay, so as a reminder, this is what our Taylor polynomial looks like, right? It's the value of the function at the known point plus the derivative at the known point times the difference between the known point and the desired point, you know, dot, 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 out to the nth derivative evaluated at the known point. So I should put a evaluated at C there over n factorial times, again, the difference between the known point and the desired point raised to the nth power. Okay, so this particular example asks for the third Taylor polynomial. So that's going to be the and centered at pi over 6. I'll just write the pi over 6 in there. So at pi over 6 plus the first derivative at pi over 6 times x minus pi over 6. That's the second order, plus f double prime at pi over 6 times x minus pi over 6 squared. Oops, forgot that. This is divided by 2 factorial, plus the third derivative evaluated at pi over 6 times x minus pi over 6 quantity cubed over 3 factorial. So that is our third Taylor polynomial for sine of x centered at pi over 6. And so let's write out these derivatives and these values. Okay, so f of x is sine of x. f prime of x is cosine x f double prime, clean that up a little bit, f the double prime of x is negative sine of x, and f triple prime of x is negative cosine of x. Okay, and let's fill in these values. f of pi over 6 is 1 half, because that's like a 30 degree, so 30, 60, 90. f prime at pi over 6 is the cosine of pi over 6, so that's a root 3 over 2, and then we have f double prime at pi over 6 is just going to be a negative 1 half, and f triple prime at pi over 6 is a negative root 3 over 2. Okay, we put all those pieces together, 
and I'll just write this out from the book, is that we get the third Taylor polynomial centered at pi over 6 becomes 1 half plus root 3 over 2 times x minus pi over 6, right? We're centered at pi over 6 plus 1 half, oops, a minus because it's a negative 1 half for the second uh, derivative times 1 over 2 root 2 times x minus pi over 6 squared plus uh, a negative root 3 over 2 and 1 over 3 factorial x minus pi over 6 cubed. And that's it. That may seem like a lot of work, but what we've done is approximate the sine function with just a polynomial. So with a regular four-function calculator, pretty much, we can approximate the sine of a value near pi over 6. Okay, so we've done this approximation, and approximations are only useful if you know how close you are to the actual value or if you have some idea. Like with the alternating series test, we were able to um, find the number of terms in the series we needed to have an error before a certain threshold. So that brings up the remainder theorem. So the remainder of a Taylor polynomial. Okay, this is a very important theorem uh, accredited to Taylor. And he says that the exact value of the function is this approximation, the Taylor approximation, plus the remainder term. So r sub n is the remainder. Okay, I mean, that's kind of an obvious statement that the exact value is the approximate value plus something else, okay? But this was really the motivation, the machinery, that allowed Taylor polynomials become, to become so useful because you can approximate the remainder. Okay, so this is the remainder term. This is kind of ugly looking, and we'll go over this much more in class. So the remainder, if you do an nth degree Taylor polynomial, or an nth Taylor polynomial, then the remainder from the nth polynomial is the next derivative, so the n plus 1th derivative, evaluated at some point z, okay? We don't know what z is. We will choose that to be the maximum possible value of this expression, okay? So that the next derivative, whatever this thing winds up being, whatever this winds up being to get the maximum value of that is what we'll use. And then, of course, we're going to do the next uh, power for the difference and, of course, the next uh, factorial. Okay, so this very, what well, looks ugly now with all these circles over it, but this remainder quantity is the real powerhouse behind Taylor polynomials because it allows us to figure out how many terms, you know, how many n's do we need to go to to find an approximation, the p sub n, that gets our error to be small. Okay, we'll go over this in class. I just want to introduce that concept now. So that's it.